All right. Well, thank you very much for having me and, and letting me talk a little bit. Wanted to get a chance to talk today about how we teach pass rush here at Kenyon, specifically my philosophy as a coach, also the philosophy that we pass down to our players, and then a little bit on the fundamentals of our pass rush, how we teach it as an art for our guys, our pass rush progression, the drills that we do for that, and then a little bit at the end about how we have had success with game planning, understanding protections, a little bit about kind of dictating perfection, uh, protections from offensive linemen, and then kind of how we attack those with some different pressures, some different stunts and twists and things like that. So a little bit about me, my name is Tom Lahendro. I'm the defensive line coach and special teams coordinator here at Kenyon College in Ohio, um, going into year five now. My background's a little bit different, so I just kind of want to talk about that real quick. So I was actually born and raised over in Scotland. Um, I grew up in a rugby background. I went to the University of Glasgow, which is one of the oldest universities in the world, uh, pretty big school as well, uh, in 2010. And that's where I started playing football. So very, very raw, kind of picked it up at 18 years old and fell in love with the sport. So I played from 2010 to 2016, mostly a defensive tackle. Um, I also played for an organization called the East Cobride Pirates, which is an adult league which plays in the summer, uh, kind of amateur league, um, one of the best again in, in Great Britain. And then I was lucky enough in 2015 to actually be selected as part of an all-star team that represented all British universities uh, to play for Great Britain University student team. And we got a chance to tour. We actually flew over to Finland and got to play against them in an international fixture. And that was something that, that I kind of keep with me. That's a really, really cool memory of my time playing football. So my coaching experience, I did six years at university. I did my undergrad and my master's at Glasgow. Uh, and my coaching experience kind of came in my kind of fifth and sixth year. I always knew that I wanted to get into coaching. I kind of dabbled with it uh, while I was finishing up my undergrad. But as I was doing my master's, I went back and really got into it. Uh, my first role was as a defensive line coach at Glasgow. I also kind of um, developed my own role as kind of a co-DC. I ran a lot of our meetings. I, I assisted with a lot of game planning. And then in 2015, again, in my first year of my master's, I actually founded and was the head coach of Scotland's second ever women's football team. So that's kind of a growing league that they have over in Britain right now. There was only one team in Scotland at the time, and I kind of liked the challenge. I wanted to be able to do something for the sport. So I started a women's football team, got all the funding together, got the facilities, organized the practices, and we had a pretty successful season. I was the head coach for that first year. Uh, following that season, I decided that I wanted to go into coaching full time. I wanted to come to the US. I reached out to a lot of different places and I was lucky enough to land here at Kenyon College. So I came out here in 2016. I started out coaching the defensive line uh, as a volunteer, essentially. I managed to get my substitute teaching license. I was able to sub and, and kind of pay the bills that way. Um, and that was kind of that first season for me. In 2017, in the off season, I was promoted to our director of football operations, a title that I still hold. In 2018, I was promoted to special teams coordinator, a title that I still hold. And then this off season, I've added the title of defensive run game coordinator. Um, and a little bit about kind of why I'm talking about pass rush and the importance of it to us. So we actually went through a, a defensive coordinator change as well as a head coaching change this last off season. And part of that change and part of our kind of change in philosophy was once we kind of had our base defensive game plan in, and particularly the run game stuff that I'm obviously quite heavily involved in, basically the rest of my week was spent understanding protections, breaking down protections, really understanding how a team protects and what they look for and how we can kind of exploit that. So the end result of that was we went from being a team in 2018 that ranked ninth in the conference with about two sacks a game to this year we added a sack per game and ended up ranking third in the conference. So pretty, pretty successful. And at the bottom there, you see my email. If anyone has any questions about anything I bring up today, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm an open book. So this is the first slide that I start our first meeting of the year with. So in fall camp, when we get in, we talk a little bit about our philosophy. We talk a little bit about our unit and, and our kind of goals. And then I throw in right here, importance of pass rush. This is a, a statistical study that I kind of ripped off that was done in the NCAA for, I think it was division one for 2017, looking at every single game. And basically what it says is, if you get a sack on a drive, you are 70% more likely to stop that drive right now the offense isn't even isn't even going to get another set of downs you're 70 70 percent more likely to stop that drive right now than where you don't get a sack so this just kind of reinforces and drives home to our guys the importance of that pass rush and how every single play we can be hugely hugely important to the success of our football team 
Mm. Um, so a little bit about my coaching philosophy as I teach pass rush. So we're going to spend time developing moves with repetition in multiple drill settings. What I mean by that is we don't teach every single move under the sun. There's a lot of different pass rush moves out there. We're basically going to take a couple and we're going to get really, really good at it. And it's my job as a coach to be really creative and create drills where these guys are able to go in and repeat those techniques, but also kind of keep it fresh for them. But they're in an environment where they're going through those movements and they're doing everything they need to do to gain that muscle memory and be really successful. For us, at our level, our guys can be really successful if they get good at basically one move. All right. With the caveat being that they got to really understand the counters off of that as well. So our guys are pretty cerebral here at Kenyon. Um, if you kind of show them what they're doing and show them what they're looking for as far as keying on an offensive lineman, they're going to really start understanding that and developing that move and the counters off of it. That's something that sometimes is a little bit innate. So sometimes we'll recruit a guy and he'll come in and he'll just be a natural pass rusher and he'll just get it. But we also believe it's something that can be coached with enough repetition, enough time talking and showing film and really understanding what we're trying to do. So our, again, our players are pretty cerebral. So we have pretty intelligent players and we spend a lot of time talking to them about what they're going to see and what type of blocks they're going to see and how they're going to defeat that. So if I have an intelligent player and I'm able to adequately set him up to understand what type of blocking scheme he's going to get, if a team's always going to slide to the three technique, that's something that's really, really important for our guys to know because they're going to understand where that down block or that, that block is coming from. Um, so our guys are going to anticipate that. They're going to watch film. They're going to understand the people they're lining up against. All right. I'm not a huge believer in one-on-ones. So I believe they serve a purpose. We do them once or twice a week. Uh, I really like them as a way for our guys to take a move that we're working on in drills. I always try and do some kind of pass rush indie right before a one-on-one -on -one period. And then we go over and we apply that in one-on-ones. And for me, I give my guys, I tell them every time we do this, I don't care if you lose every single rep. I want to see you working a move and I want to see you getting that discomfort and that kind of roboticness out of it so that you're able to build that move into your repertoire and you're able to be successful once we get to the weekend. So one-on-ones for us are really kind of a testing ground to try out new stuff and really get good at what we do. For me, I find five on fours is a much more applicable drill. So a whole offensive line against a whole defensive line, even six on four, if you want to throw a running back in there and show us some full slide protection and stuff like that. But for me, and, and our defense, like, we really understand that pass rushing is a unit effort, right? It's four guys against five guys. It's four guys against six or seven guys. You're never going to be one-on-one. -on -one. You're the only guy who has to make a play on this play, right? We need one person to win, and we need everybody to have a structured rush and create pressure on that QB and make each other right, essentially. So we spend a lot more time in five-on-fours really understanding how to rush as a unit. And you're going to see in a little bit, we do a lot of stunting um, and twisting when we get into past situations. So that's another great way for us to really understand how to fit, fit off each other and really trust each other in those stunts and those twists. Pass rush philosophy that we hand down to our players so our guys, the word that we use in our meeting room is relentless, okay? I'm not going to kind of coat it in glitter. Like, our guys, we don't have the most incredible athletes in the world, all right? We have some really smart football players. We got some, some guys that really work their craft and work really hard. But for us, if we're going to get home and, and we're going to be really, really successful as pass rushers, we need to be relentless. So from the snap of that ball, as soon as we read pass, our feet don't stop moving until that QB's on the ground or that ball comes out, all right? And our job is to disrupt the pass. Right? That doesn't always mean getting a sack. It means getting a hit on the QB. It means pressuring him and making him move his feet. It means getting our hands into throwing lanes and obscuring that ball or batting that ball. All of that stuff is really important for us. We're going to create pressure and disrupt that pass. Rush lanes is a huge part of what we do. In today's world of college football, we don't play against a single QB week in, week out that can't beat us with his legs. All right, so if we cover that thing up great and we give a rush lane for that QB to step up and run through, that kind of tears our whole defense apart. What you're going to end up seeing is linebackers not trusting. They're going to come out of coverage to come up and make a play. We're going to give up those intermediate routes. Now your secondary are coming up to, to cover those, and now everything's falling apart. So it's really important for us that everybody trusts that the rushers, right, our three, four, five, six base rushers are going to be able to keep the QB in the pocket or direct him where we want him to go while still um, applying pressure in there. We're going to attack edges, okay? It sounds pretty obvious, but, like, I'm not a big bull rush guy, right? We don't really teach going down the middle of an offensive lineman. It happens, and I'll talk in a little bit about kind of what we do to counter that. But for us, we always want to attack half a man. 
right? Whether that's the outside half, the inside half, obviously is going to change based on sets and things like that. But we always want to attack half a man. Part of the reason for that is that's how we're going to win, right? You're not going to win very often going straight down the middle of a guy. That's where he wants to be, okay? But also, we talk about making the QBC color. And this is kind of something that, you know, bears thinking about. A QB is dropping back in the pocket, and he's trying to read concepts. He's trying to read his his receivers out on their routes, and he's trying to understand what coverage you're in. He is not looking at the rush, all right? Offensive coordinator doesn't want him looking at the rush. So what he's going to see as far as rush is, he's just going to feel it with his peripheral vision. So for us, a lot of the time, we can, again, disrupt the pass, generate pressure, just by making the QB see color. So what we mean by that is getting our jersey into a gap. If that QB sees those purple Canyon jerseys or those white Canyon jerseys coming through a gap, he's going to feel that pressure, whether it's there or not. He's going to bring his eyes down. He's going to tuck that ball. It's going to throw off the timing of their route. So that's something that's really important for us as well. Having a plan and knowing your move encounters off it. Again, we're going to teach these guys a couple of moves. They're going to pick one or two that they really like, and they're going to become masters of those. They're going to get really, really good at that move. They're going to understand what they're looking for in the set of an offensive lineman and know how they're going to counter out of that move if they get a certain set. All right, and then studying film. Again, this goes down to our guys being smart football players, understanding the types of sets they're going to get, but also understanding their opponent. Does he have a pre-snap key that is going to show me when he's getting off, if it's run pass, maybe where the protection's going, that kind of stuff? Is he a high puncher? Is he a low puncher? Is he going to jump set? Is he going to punch on his first, his third step? All right, all of that stuff, if our guys are able to study that film and really understand that, again, it's going to make them so much better in, in, as pass rushers. And that's really something that you need to kind of empower how are your guys to do and then you just got to hope that they go out there and do so a little bit about kind of how we structure our rushes so again rush lanes are hugely important for us our base rush we're a four down team our base rush is with four people so a little bit about how we pressure with four men so we're going to have two contain rushers right every coach in america probably uses this terminology our contain rushers are going to basically their job is to keep the qb inside the pocket so not allow him to escape laterally out of the pocket they're going to have a two-way go on the offensive tackle. They always need to be in a position to keep the QB inside of them. I like to restrict my guys as little as possible, right? So I don't want to tell them a ton of different rules. So if I use the terminology, always be in a position to keep the QB inside of you, that gives them a lot of freedom to go around and do a lot of different things, as long as they know they can make themselves right after. And then inside of that, we have two what we call face rushers. So I used to use the terminology G rush, which basically meant like I'm going to take a two-way go on the guard. Um, but we changed it to face rusher because, again, I want to be less restrictive. So a face rusher for us, their job is to stop the QB getting through the pocket, pocket vertically. Right? So their job is to keep the QB always inside and upfield of them. Their aiming point is going to be the non-throwing shoulder of the QB, so basically his upfield shoulder. Our contained rushers are going to aim for his throwing shoulder, his back shoulder. Okay, And that's going to kind of be kind of how we create that net of, of pressure in our rush lanes. All right, so for us, we need to be able to get home with four rushers, whether it's in a base rush, whether it's in our twists and stunts. We need to be able to drop seven and play coverage and trust that we're going to be able to generate pressure all right, there's that word again, not necessarily sack the QB, but generate pressure and disrupt the passing game with our four rushers. All right, it's going to be a group effort. So sacking the QB, containing the QB is all four of us. Again, five on four drills is so important to us because we really have to trust each other as a unit that we're going to be there when we need to be. And this little sentence at the end is kind of my carte blanche. This is my get out of jail free card as a coach. We always say rush lanes are fluid. And basically what that says is, okay, you have these rules, but if you want to take your shot, if you see a gap and you're going to go, your buddies better make you right. Okay, so if my contained rusher sees a gap and he shoots inside and ends up crossing the face of the queue, guess what? I'm counting on that D tackle to work outside and have contained on that QB. Okay, so this is kind of a little word I use to get out of jail. All right, if I show, show something on film where a guy breaks every rule but makes a big play, guess what? Rush lanes are fluid. Okay, learn to rush as a unit. All right, so we're looking to rattle the QB, force him into bad decisions, and then, again, relentless, right? When speed, power, technique fail, we're going to go all out with effort, and that's how we're going to get home. So this is just a little bit about kind of our rush lanes, right? So here are your contain rushers. This is our base four-man rush. Okay, so our contain rushers on the outside. On the inside right here are our face rushers, okay? So again, keeping the QB inside and upfield them. You're going to see these guys read sets. You're going to see them attack through their rush lanes, keep the QB in the pocket, and get a sack right here. So here we go. Okay, we get a little spin from our three technique. There's our rush lanes, okay, keeping the QB inside and in front. Our three technique almost crosses face of the QB, but you're going to see he does a great job of leaning back, pushing vertical, and getting pressure on the Q right here. 
getting up and making that play on the quarterback. All right, making a sack with four-man rush. Huge part of what we do. Okay, and then our change-up is our five-man pass rush, right? So we're going to pressure with five to get the QB behind the sticks or, or to get the offense behind the sticks, right? We're trying to get them in second and long, trying to get them in third and long so that we can they can be predictable, right? So we can understand what they're going to do, basically eliminate half of their playbook. So when we five-man pressure, we teach the D-line to be a lot more aggressive, even in the run game. Like, those guys have rules in the run game that we stick by. But when we're, when we're five-man pressuring – that goes out the window to an extent. We want them to be super aggressive and fly off the ball because if anything, you know, if they just penetrate, that ball's going to line back. We're going to have a blitzer. We're going to have a guy in that next gap backside. So we're very, very aggressive when we pressure. All right. And um, we just kind of understand our rush structure. So again, we're, we don't change much from our four man rush when we five man pressure. We still have those two contained rushers. We like those guys to stay outside in a five man rush just because there's less space inside. So typically we just tell them to stay outside of the tackles now. Our face rushers remain the same. And then we have what we call a free rusher. Okay, so the middle of that five man pressure is our free rusher. So if you have contains outside, then your face rush in the middle is your free rusher. He has no rules. All right, so he's really kind of our our wild card. His job is to get the QB off the point and flush him to the rest of those four guys. Um, so ideally, we want to have three opposite the slide. We play against a lot of half slide teams. We want that guy to work opposite the slide of the center, but really he has no rules. All right, he just needs to get in that backfield and make that QB move again, disrupt the pass. Okay, so a little bit about our pass rush techniques and our drills. So this is kind of the, the famous Bruce Lee quote. Again, this goes back to our kind of fundamentals of we're going to get one move and get really good at it, right? So Bruce Lee says, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. And that's what we're trying to do in our Indian and in our drills. We're trying to practice this one technique a thousand times and get really, really good at it and have these guys trust it and understand what our progression is. That's how we're going to be successful. So a little bit on our drills right here. The first thing we talk about is get off. Okay. We have a saying in our room, there's no substitute for a great get off. So every single pass rush period, we start with a get off drill. It's very, very simple, but it teaches those guys to understand when we're in a pass rush situation. And again, if they're great film students, they're going to know when we're in a pass rush situation, even when it isn't third and double sticks or whatever. If we're in a pass rush situation, we need to fly off the ball. So a little bit on the drills that we kind of work here. So this is just a straight get off drill. Okay. We're doing, this is a competitive drill. So those guys are going to call each other out. They're going to line up against each other and they're looking to get off the ball. On a visual key, okay, so I got my assistant D-line coach here working a, a false cadence. He's got the ball and a stick going right here. I made that myself, Nerf ball and a little bit of uh, epoxy resin and a mop handle, okay, but we're working on a false cadence. We're going on movement, and what you see here is we have some pylons, okay? You can use whatever you want, nothing too high because we don't want to teach them to really jump up out of their stance, but what we're looking for here is we want to give them something to step past, and that really drills them to gain ground on that first step. We want to be explosive. We want to be as long as we can on that first step. So what you see right here is on the movement, they're going to fly out. They're going to get long with that first step. And again, it's a competitive drill. So I'm standing back here at four yards or five yards, and these guys have to come out and touch me. There's a winner. There's a loser. I call it out, right? Those guys can compete against each other. And it's a really quick way to start, start an indie period or a practice, right? We spend two or three minutes on this and then go to the next drill. Okay, this is the similar type of thing, right? My assistant D-line coach didn't show up this day, so this is just how you do it with one coach, all right? Here's me standing in the middle. They're going on my movement, all right? I'm just backing off like a rabbit. And again, they're exploding out. They're competing. They're trying to see who can touch first. There's a winner. There's a loser, right? We're creating competitors here. And then this last drill I really like. So this, again, a visual key. You can see we're using an offensive line board right here. I really like it. Again, it's nice and low, so it's not forcing them to really pick that foot up, but they are getting along with that first step. And we're rolling a ball out, again, a visual key. The cool thing I like about this drill is we're going to teach them to dip and touch that ball and turn the corner at the top. And essentially, we're simulating a rush path right here. So they got a visual key, they got a long first step, and they're getting a lean and a little bit of body control right here as well. So I'm a big fan of that drill. Next thing we teach, so the, the very first kind of day one pass rush technique that we teach is what we call a wipe. So for us, a wipe is two hands straight up and down, so forearms vertical, and we're wiping. So we're wiping through the punch of that offensive lineman, basically side to side, trying to keep our pads clean. 
This is a day one technique for us because I feel like if you're going up against a poorly drilled offensive line, a lot of the time those guys are just throwing their hands into the middle of your chest, right? There's not a lot of nuance to it. So if you're going against not a great def uh, offensive line or not a very good offensive lineman, all right, this is going to work more often than not. So a little bit on kind of the drill work that we use for this. So this first drill, again, we're putting them on a line, we're having them get off the ball, and we're working a hoop, okay? Nice and simple. Again, this, this drill doesn't simulate a game situation, okay? I'm never gonna ask a guy to pull off nine different white moves as he goes around an offensive lineman, but what we are seeing is he's working that technique where he's getting that wipe, forearm straight up and down, okay? Not the best in the world right here, okay? He's a little patty cake with his hands, but what we're looking to see is his hips pointed inside of the circle, so we know he's throwing that hip around, okay? And then we get that lean, that dip and rip at the end, okay, really important for us. This rep's a little less clean. I threw this one in here so you can kind of understand, you know, what we're not looking for. So you can see right here, his hips are never pointed into the circle. Shows me that he's not throwing that hip, okay? And it's gonna mean he's gonna run a much wider hoop on that guy when he pulls this move in practice or in a game. Okay, and then a pretty clean rep here at the end. Okay, he's cheating. This is my freshman right here. Cheating, not lining up on the line of scrimmage. Okay, but you can see really violent hands. Look at the hip coming around. Really good finish right there. So that's a pretty good drill for us. Okay, again, we try and do a lot of varied drills to work the same techniques, right? So this is a drill I do. We throw out four pop-ups. They simulate our rush lanes. What they allow us to do is get off of the ball. Obviously, we're going to be attacking at different heights, okay? So our, our defensive ends are typically on three steps. You're going to see our D tackles on one step, okay? Turn in that corner and then teaching how we finish on the QB, right? So backhand is high, going over his shoulder, tomahawking that ball out. Near hand is low around the hip, finishing the tackle, finishing the sack on the QB. Okay, it's a lot shorter for our interior linemen. They're going to take one step and pull this move. You're going to see the same thing for my three technique right here. Again, one step, pull a move, hip around, finish on the QB in great form. Back hands high, front hands low. Okay, and then lastly, this is just a little tight hoop for us. I'm a big fan of the tight hoop because it really forces our guys to come tight. I challenge them to stay close to this hoop. So you can just throw it out with cones. I also got like a little My Little Pony one from Walmart, spray painted it black and use that as well. So you're gonna see these guys again, getting off the ball, long first step. All right, they have something to step over. Throw in that hip, throw in that white move, getting that hip around, tight on the hoop, finishing vertical. All right, so again, one move, lots of different drills where we're really working that muscle memory, keeping it interesting for the guys, but working the same move every time. Okay, next move for us is what we call a speed hook. Okay, so speed hook is a high to low movement with our near hand to the offensive line. Okay, and we're basically chopping down or we're hooking through those arms. Really good against someone who's a quick puncher with low hands. All right, we're going to hook through those low hands. And this is the first one where we're going to get into like a real progression right here. So you're going to see this is just a little half uh, hoop drill, right? So we're just working a little semi-circle, okay? See these guys again, flying off the ball on movement. There's that hook, okay? For us, we work a slap off of it or a club with that outside arm. What that does is it forces our hips around, okay? A big part of what we teach in, in, in pass rush is getting that inside toe pointed to where we want to go. So you can see he's getting that right toe around pointed to where he wants to go. Wherever that inside toe is pointed is where the rest of our body's going to go, right? So he gets a good hook and he's going to accelerate through that one right there. Same thing right here. This guy ends up going a little bit wide with his first step. Not a huge fan of that, right? We never want to widen off of their punch. We're going to go right through it and trust our technique. All right, but good job of getting his hips around. Okay, and again, different drill, same technique. So we just throw up four pop-ups. What we're looking for is these guys to finish nice and tight down the back of the line, all right? So as little uh, space between them and the pop-ups as possible when I'm coming down nice and tight. But this is a great way. Look, I got 12 defensive linemen. All right, I get four at a time through here, and all I got to do is walk down the line and look at a different guy each time. But everyone's getting reps every single time. Again, you can back up your defensive ends if you want to do it more in a three-step, right? And, and your defensive tackles can come up and do it off a of one-step. For us, the important thing is we're drilling that inside toe. We're drilling that technique, right? We force them to club because we got the pop-up right there, and then they're finishing flat down the line with an accelerator. Okay, and then again, I talked a little bit about our, our progression. Okay, so we're going to, um, if we get an overset from this guy, right, he sells out oversets for our speed hook, we're going to work with a spin move off the top of it. Okay, so there you see a spin. For us, a spin when we finish. So we're going to sit down into the lap of the offensive lineman. We're going to bring that ice pick with the offhand, and then we should finish straight vertical. 
Okay, so that's really what I'm looking to see here. See that hook, sit down into the lap, bring the ice pick. This guy finishes a little loose. I want him to finish straight vertical. Okay, next move we work is a stab. This is the closest we come to kind of teaching like a true power rush. Okay, so for us, like we're going to stab as a way to try and get, why isn't this going on? We're going to stab as a way to try and get the offensive lineman to set his feet. Okay, so we want to sell the illusion of power. Every now and then we're going to we're going to bring power if that guy's really oversetting on us and he's not respecting it. But for us, we really want him to set his feet. So a stab for us is a punch with our inside hand to the inside peck of the offensive line. And what we're looking for is for him to set his feet and throw his hands. So that's kind of what we're simulating here. Okay, guys in a great pass rush position, forward body lean, hands moving. All right, inside hand to inside peck. Shoot, as soon as I shoot the hand, he's going to punch through. And he's, again, he's going to throw that hip, try and get his belt buckle into my pocket. Okay, we can get a ton of reps. Only one guy at a time in this drill right here, but we're getting a ton of reps at a time. Okay, this is just a way to kind of incorporate it into your get-off drill. This is the Vikings right here. Our video coordinator hates me, so I don't have great film of some of these progressions, so I had to steal some from the pros. So here we have, again, going on a visual key, getting off the ball, and it's the same type of idea. We're trying to tag someone, but also we're teaching that inside hand, inside peck, stab move right there. Okay, this is a little off-season trainer that I like using. I share his videos with my guys. Again, same type of thing, inside hand, inside peck. You can get a ton of reps in there. Okay, the reason I threw this in here again, our video guy hates me. All right, but you're going to see the progression. If we have an overset, we work what we call a shot putt. So we're going to throw that guy upfield and rip inside. Okay, I think you're going to see one example from it, from us right at the end here. Okay, here's Jared Allen throwing that stab flip. Okay, and then here's us. This is us just working that overset. Again, shot putt upfield, tear through back inside. Okay, this is maybe a little bit unique to us. We actually spend a lot of time drilling the top of the rush. Okay, so I'm sure everyone does some kind of like teaching your guys to rip and rip through, but we actually kind of talk about specifically rip and lean and all the things that we can kind of do off of that if our rip lean isn't getting us there. So I'll show you a little bit on that progression here. So again, this is something that we can do. We can get everyone going through at the same time. I'll just work down the line and I'm just looking at one of them at a time. So what we're doing is we have one guy as an offensive lineman. We're going to fit up into him. And then on, on go or on set hut or whatever, we're going to work a rip and lean. So if you look at the three on the right here, they're kind of the more experienced guys. Ripping and leaning, we're trying to press through that guy and not gain ground vertically. Again, rushing through a half a man, throwing that outside arm, bringing our hips around. Okay, and like I said, we're going to kind of work a progression off of it. Sorry, this is just another picture here. So again, this is the Vikes, but you can see kind of how we teach that. So we're going to hook into the inside of our, the V of our collar here. It's a good way to kind of simulate that offensive lineman being up in our face. Okay, and again, rip and lean, really throwing that hip around. Very easy drill to do, but it teaches that movement at the top of the rush. This is what we call a rip escape. Okay, so what you're going to see here, 57 is going to do a pretty good job of it. So this is, if I'm rip leaning and I feel like I'm not going to get there, okay, I can't turn that corner tight enough on the offensive lineman, we're going to work a rip escape. So what you're going to see is he's going to pull his elbow back out, all right, he's going to rip that thing out, and he's going to punch through with his offhand and bring his hips around, okay? And what that's going to do is allow him to tighten that corner, come even tighter off of the back of that offensive lineman. So pull that elbow out, rip through. Okay, and then another thing, we don't really have it on film here, but another part of our progression, I have it in, in kind of our one-on-one -on -one film later, is we'll also teach a hump off of that. So if, again, I'm ripping and leaning, that guy's opened up and he's overselling to wash me up field, we'll pull the old Reggie White hump move, we'll pull that arm out and work back over the top of him. Again, that's part of these progressions. I don't have that on film right here. Okay, and then the last thing that we teach is what we call transition to pass. And I think this is a hugely important part of pass rush that maybe – enough time isn't spent on so what transition to pass is for us is any situation where you're not anticipating pass all right maybe it's play action maybe you're getting a jump set all right maybe you know they're coming hard into you and you're really not anticipating pass you're never going to be a natural pass rusher in that situation you're never going to be flying off the ball pulling your moves like we're drilling in practice what's going to happen is your momentum's going to stop that guy's going to be bodying up on you. He's going to have his hands up in your up in your chest plate. All right, so we need to work getting off of that because that's a really big part of the game when you think about it, right? Anytime someone's kind of throwing a pass play out of their normal 
normal kind of tendencies, we're going to get this drill. So for us, what we teach in transition to pass is we're going to basically pull through our hips through into a gap. And the way we do that is we're going to pull what we say opposite knee to opposite elbow. So you're going to see 59 here is like the fourth one down on the line. Okay. We're in a position. We've already lost. That guy stopped our momentum. He's got his hands in the middle. We're going to pull my hips into the gap. And you're going to see him pull his left elbow to his right knee. Okay. Opposite knee, opposite elbow. And then we can finish with a rip or we can finish with a tight arm over here. Okay, this is just, again, the pros doing it. Right here go the Vikings doing exactly the same thing. Stuck up in that offensive lineman. I'm going to transition a pass, opposite knee to opposite elbow. They're going tight swim over the top. You can work it on a man. Here we go. Off a of bull rush. Feel that, feel that guy leaning against me. Opposite knee to opposite elbow, nice and tight. Finish over the top. And then the last one we got right here is in a drill situation. Okay, one-on-ones, you're going to see the same thing again. That guy's going to jump set, get his hands in me. I'm going to have to transition to pass. So this is something we spend a lot of time on with our guys. A couple of times a week, we're going to transition to pass. Okay, so our principles. When Coach Rosenberry, our new head coach, came to Canyon last spring, he talked to us about developing a position three. So what he means by that is basically three buzzwords that kind of encapsulate what it means to be a successful defensive lineman at Canyon or a linebacker or a QB or whatever it is. So I'm a simple guy. We came up with three simple words. Our three words are start, diagnose, finish. Okay, they apply to our run game. They apply, apply to our pass game. All right, so start is pretty obvious. It's having a great takeoff, all right? It's aligning right. It is understanding the situation and putting yourself in a position to be successful in that situation, knowing if it's pass, maybe getting more width or whatever it is, all right? But then flying off the ball, closing the cushion to the offensive lineman, forward lean, head up, active hands. Okay, the way we do that is by having a great visual key. So I already kind of spoke about we're a big ball key team, right? So we're all going to key the ball. You, you'll have heard of some people who key the offensive lineman in front of them is kind of like a general term. Some people get even more specific. They key the near knee. A lot of the time that twitches before the rest of the body. Depends what you want to teach. Depends how kind of minute you want to be with that. We're just a ball key team. All right. And then we're going to make the offensive line respect speed. I'm going to show you in a little bit, a bunch of our pass rushes. Every single one of them is set up off of speed rush. Okay. All of our moves are speed rush moves where if they overset for speed, we're going to work our counter off of it. Diagnose, this goes back to film study. This goes back to understanding sets. All right, so we're gonna have our pre-snap plan. We're gonna fly off the ball. I'm working a speed hook. Awesome, that's my pre-snap plan. Okay, but guess what? If I get an overset, we already talked about it. What am I gonna do? I'm probably gonna work a spin move inside. So we need to have a post-snap read. Okay, diagnose that, that offensive lineman's pass set. Okay, and, and the way we kind of break down pass sets is into four different kind of categories. So we talk about a jump set, overset, underset, and an open gate. And I got some film on all of those in a second here. Okay, and then the last thing is finish. So applying your correct technique as it's being coached to you, accelerating from the block point to the QB, getting that inside toe pointed where I wanna go, where my aim point is on the QB, right? Throwing shoulder if I'm a contain rusher, non-throwing shoulder if I'm a face rusher. All right, and then turn and burn is a phrase that we use a ton. I think I say it probably 50 times per practice going back over the last four years called a couple thousand times i've said it since i got to ohio turn and burn for us is basically is all about effort but really it's something that applies to when that ball is thrown all right the qb gets that ball out we're going to turn and run we're not going to look and see who catches it or where the intended is or whatever if it's covered we're turning and running right now and every single year we make game-changing plays based off of that philosophy. It's a huge part of what we do. It's hard to do, right? Those guys all don't always want to run. They don't always see the point of it. Every single practice, every single clip, we're talking about it. We're showing it on film, doing it the right way. I got a clip of it right here. Senior nose tackle, okay? So again, he heard me talk about it 2,000 times over the last four years. So you're going to see him right here. Smart football player, understanding they're going to slide to the three technique. He gets himself vertical before the guard's able to get down on him. Gets pressure on the QB. Okay, he doesn't get the sack, but the ball comes out. Guess what? He's a face rusher, and he let, he doesn't keep the QB inside and in front. But we can't be perfect. Okay, ball comes out right here. What is he doing? He's turning and burning. See him run. Guess what? Strike is batting the ball up. We end up picking that thing off, right? 280-pound nose tackle getting a pick right there, all because of his effort. Turn and burn. Nothing gets you juiced up like that. Okay, so I spoke about kind of our past sets and how we define them. So we live by the philosophy here at Canyon that there is no such thing as a perfect pass set, right? Joe Thomas doesn't play in our conference. 
Tyron Smith doesn't play in our conference. So there's always going to be a weakness in the pass set. And it's up to us to understand what that set is. So for us, a typical pass set is what we call an under set. What we mean by that is the offensive lineman is giving us his outside half. So with our speed path, we're going to be rushing through the outside half of that offensive lineman. This is the situation that we're drilling for, right? All of our moves are basically working an under set where I'm working through his outside arm, I'm working my technique, and I'm getting, I'm turning that edge, right? So a little bit of film on that. You're gonna see some under sets right here. So here is our three technique, okay? He's just working a straight speed hook. He's gonna have a great get off. He's gonna speed hook through that outside arm. And then again, here comes that rip lean drill, turn that corner, get that inside toe pointed to the cue. Okay, here's the nose tackle. He's going just straight speed rip, okay? He thinks he can beat this guy. He's on his snap hands. So he's just going straight speed. He's gonna try and rip and lean. What you're gonna see here is, an, is this guy, to start with, he's undersetting, right? We feel like we can take that edge. He's gonna turn into an overset or what we call an open gate. So again, this is our progression, right? We're in a rip lean. We see that guy open his hips. We're gonna work our hump move over the top. Okay, and we're right there in the lap of the QB. Next guy right here, here's that white move, right? The very first one we drill. This kid's not the most athletic in the world, doesn't look great, but guess what? He gets three great steps upfield, he pulls that white, brings his hip around, points the toe, he's in a position to make a play on the QB, not allow him out of the pocket. That's a really good rep right there. Three technique on the right, working a speed hook again. Again, under set, he's given us the outside half, we're gonna take that speed hook, Look at that inside toe point. Really good lean to the QB. Okay, a white move. Again, day one stuff, right? First move we learn. Here comes the punch right now. There's the white. Look at the hip coming around. Look at that inside toe. Finish on the cue. So these are all what we kind of typify as under sets, okay? Jump set is the next thing to talk about. So a jump set for us is anytime the offensive line is looking to make contact early in the down. You're going to see it in play action all the time. They're going to use it as a change up at offensive tackle. A lot of the time, in interior is kind of muddy between what a jump set and just a regular set is, right? So basically for us, if that punch is coming as we're in, in the middle of our kind of first or second step, we need to be able to react to that as if it was a jump set. So what we're looking for is our guys within their first step, they're going to react. They're going to keep their pads clean. And a lot of the time with a jump set, that guy's stalling out with his punch right now. So if we can beat that, if we can keep our pads clean, we're going to win very early on in the down. So I've got a couple examples of that right here for you. Right, so here's my, my nose tackle, right? One technique, jump set. The guy's coming out to make contact early. So again, first foot goes in the ground, recognize that that punch is coming early. There's my wipe, right? Keeping my pads clean. Now we're turning nice and tight on the hoop. Okay, this guy's thinking speed hook, right? He's a big speed hook guy. He loves that move. What do we say? We got a jump set, all right? Essentially the same as an overset right here. So we're gonna work our spin, sit down into his lap, bring that ice pick, finish vertical, right? I'm still same side of the QB. I'm still in a position to stop him stepping up through the line. Really good rep right there. Here's a little Notre Dame right here, okay? Again, you're gonna see an early set, okay? A jump set, that guy's sliding to me. My foot gets in the ground and I'm already pulling a move, right? Here's that white move, get my hips around outside. The guy's selling out for the punch. I'm able to get pressure right now. Okay, same thing here, get kind of an overset, right? A really early set when we're going speed hook. What's my, what's my progression off of that? It's a spin, right? Bring that ice pick, finish vertical. Okay, this guy's going straight speed hook. So again, that punch is coming early, but he does a good job of deflecting the hands, getting his hips outside. You can still stay outside on that thing. Really good job. Okay, and then this last one here kind of shows us that transition to pass, right? This guy's not expecting it. He gets the punch right now. He's a defensive end playing in a three technique. So he's expecting that guy to bail and kind of honor his speed. He gets the punch right now. His, his momentum is stopped, so what do we do? pull opposite knee, opposite elbow. Not the cleanest rep in the world, but guess what? It works. We get to that edge and there's our rip lean drill right there. Finishing in front of the QB. Really good job. Okay, and then this last one, I got to throw this in here. This is my nose tackle, right? Not the cleanest pass rusher in the world. Not going to lie. If we know they're passing, he's not on the field. But guess what? We get a jump set. 
really good job with the white move, keep our pads clean. Okay, he knows he's not gonna win with speed on the edge. So what does he do? Hands down the middle, I'm going power rush, getting pressure on the QB, getting him off his point, right? Influencing the pass. Overset, okay, is obviously we're gonna make them honor our speed. So eventually what you're gonna see is those guys really bailing out of there to try and cover that speed path. So an overset, all right, they're setting past the midpoint of our rush. We no longer wanna rush through the outside half. We're gonna react and we're gonna win through the inside half of that guy. So here's one from a game. Okay, you're gonna see an overset from this guard. He's gonna to set too wide to honor our speed. We get a good white move right here, come inside, pressure on the QB. Okay, three technique again. Look at this guy bailing out, right? He's past the midline of my rush. So I'm gonna work. What's my reactive move off of a speed hook? It's a spin move. Sit down into his lap, bring that ice pick, finish on the cue. Same thing right here, defensive end. Okay, overset. Look at this guy overselling. He's past the midpoint of my rush line. Work the inside move. Okay, and then for us, we talk about, again, you gotta be in a position to keep the QB in, inside the pocket, right? You're a contained rusher. So what we teach our guys is finish vertical. Okay, so that same rip lean drill that we do to turn an edge can easily be used right here. I'd like to see him ripping and pushing back up field here to stay vertical and be in a position to contain the cue. Okay, I think you're gonna see that right here. Again, an overset from the offensive tackle. Work the inside move with the spin, right? He finishes vertical, same side of the cue. Same idea right here, okay? Not the prettiest thing in the world, but definitely an overset. That guy's way setting out. Work the inside move. Okay, again, this guy's finishing across the face of the QB, not where we want him for his rush lane. Really good job here, 55, okay? Pushing back vertical. And then I think this is probably the cleanest rep we got on film right here, 59. Great speed rusher. Okay, look at 71, get out there, honoring speed, past the midline of my rush. Work the inside move and then finish vertical, rip lean inside. Look at that lean. That's where we want to see him, right? Finish vertical. Now the QB can't get outside. I can always work back into him, right? There's not an offensive line between me and him anymore. But if he works outside, that's where I got issues. So we want to finish vertical first before squeezing to the QB. Really, really good job right there. Okay, and then just kind of showing you, they don't always overset outside, okay? This is like a two-eye rusher right here with an overset inside. Really good job of recognizing that. Works back outside makes a play on the QB, right? That's one from practice for us. And then I got to throw some pro film in here. Okay, so both defensive ends essentially get oversets. Both of them work a great move inside, get pressure on the cue. Okay, and then the last set that we talk about is an open gate, okay? So this can happen early in the down. It can happen late in the down. You already kind of showed, I talked about it with the hump move. So for us, an open gate is anytime that offensive lineman honors our speed and ends up opening his hips so that his pads are perpendicular to the line of scrimmage. We call that an open gate. So our rule with an open gate as a defensive line is we are going either power or we're going inside. So we actually drill this, and I'm going to show you this a little bit. Okay, so this is a drill that we do for open gate. All right, so we're going to be pass rushing, again, exploding off the ball. We're going to see that offensive lineman open his hips. Okay, and what we actually work is we basically work like a reach drill Right, so it's a push pull to crank his his shoulders open, get that edge nice and tight, and rip through. Okay, you're gonna see a couple examples of it right here. Same again, right? Physically cranking that gate open and ripping through. All right, and the last one right here, really violent hands, open that gate, rip through. So what you end up seeing is if that guy's opening his gate and you're push pulling and opening his shoulders and ripping through, what you're gonna see is he's gonna start fighting that. Right, so this is what this drill is right here fighting upfield, not letting you open my gate, what are we gonna do? Tear through back inside. Okay, so that's a little drill work that we work. Okay, obviously in practice, it's gonna be a lot more kind of messy, right? It's gonna be a lot more reactive, but if we see an open gate, we're going power or we're going inside. So this is a couple examples of that. So this is, again, we're going speed, wipe. Okay, look at that guy overset right here. That's an open gate. Hump back over the top, finish on the non-throwing shoulder of the QB. Really, really good rep right there. Okay, here's our defensive end. Selling speed. Offensive lineman opens the gate. Okay, we're trying to just go straight speed rip. 
we do a good job of understanding we're going past the depth of the QB, right? There's that terminology again. We're no longer in a position to keep the QB inside the pocket, but we got an open gate. So where are we going? Back over the top, right? Violent spin. There's the elbow. There's the ice pick. Finish on the back shoulder of the QB. Great rep right there, okay? This is a good example of power. Okay, you're going to see Notre Dame right here. Selling speed up field. We got an open gate from the right tackle. Where are we going? We're going to power, right? There's that stab move inside hand coming off pressure on the QB, okay? And you're going to see an example of it from us right here, 59 inside. Again, sell speed, okay? He's trying to bring the wipe. That guy's bailing, honoring his, his speed. But guess what? We got his gate open. There goes the stab. We're going power. We're going inside. Pressure on the cube. Great rep right there. Okay, and then lastly right here, this is my, my slow defensive end. Okay, but again, he does enough with his get off, right? He's working an outside hook move but he gets an open gate. He's going power, right? This left tackle is no slouch. He's a pretty good football player, but we managed to get up underneath him, get a bull rush, get pressure on the cue. Okay, and then again, right? This is early on in the down. We're going power. And then there, we're working that transition to pass drill. So that's kind of how we break down pass sets. All right, so I promised you guys I would talk a little bit about kind of how we break down protection schemes, okay? So first and foremost, the terminology that we use. The majority of pass protections that we see in our conference are half slide protections, all right? So what we mean by that, I'm sure everyone probably understands, but to kind of show it to, so we're all talking the same, same language, right? This team here is gonna half slide opposite the running back. So what we're gonna see is center guard tackle, essentially are your zone side, okay? There's zoning, we're in our Oki front right here. So there's zoning between the inside backer, defensive end and the outside backer. Okay, and then to the back side is what we call our man side. Okay, so we're going to be locked on, excuse the hideous drawing, right? We're locked on, tackle on the end, guard on the nose, and then your running back is reading pressure inside to out. Okay, so that's kind of how we break down a, pass, uh, a half slide protection. All right, so for us, when we're scheming to attack protections, most of the time we want to attack the back side. We want to attack the man side. This is kind of a rule breaker for us. In this game, our, our um, pass rush plan was kind of predicated around this left tackle. Okay, we felt like we had a pretty good matchup there. So you're going to see us get pressure off of the other side. Okay, really good job right there. But typically we're going to attack through the man side. Okay, next thing to talk about is a full slide protection, right? So full slide is now the entire offensive line is zoning. You're going to see full slide to the field right here. Entire offensive line is zoning to the field, okay? So, and then they're going to seal that backside with a tight end, a running back, or maybe both. So when we're game planning and we understand a team is going to full slide, we're going to try and attack them to the backside of the slide. And what we're going to try and do is get a two-on-one there. So if they're sealing the backside with a, with a running back or a tight end, we're just going to try and scheme it so we can get two guys on that one and get a win there. We haven't had a huge amount of success attacking through the slide against full slide teams. So not the cleanest pressure in the world right here, but you get an understanding of kind of what we do. So we're going to see full slide to the field. Everyone's zoning, tight end, staying backside. Okay, and what you're going to see is we're going to try and generate a two-on-one with number one, our Mike, and number 20, our defensive end. Okay, where we're kind of trying to get a little twist pressure here, two-on-one. We're way late with this one. Okay, the pressure doesn't come like you would like. We tighten it up wrong, but that's kind of what we're trying to get. We're trying to get two-on-one to the backside of a slide. All right, and then the final one we talk about is man protection, right? In our terminology, we call it birds. Don't ask me why, um, but birds for us is basically man-on-man, big-on-big protection. If, if I could choose as a defensive lineman, I would have offenses protect us with man protection all day. We really like attacking this because we feel like we can twist and pick off of it. We feel like there's a lot of, a lot of ways to exploit it because essentially what you end up with is guys kind of locked one-on-one. -on -one. So this is a good example of man protection right here. We're going to go in a second into how we kind of dictate protections, but you can see we've walked up our backers. We're trying to dictate the protection right here. So what we end up is man, big on big, right? So that's kind of typified by vertical sets. Those guys are going to set vertical. They're going to be locked on basically one guy. Okay, and it's a really good way for us, like I said, to, to kind of mess with their rules, to get twists, to get picks, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Okay, but this right here, we do a really good job. Again, that left tackle right to the right of our screen, he's man, he's locked onto our defensive end. So as we know as long as we come inside, we pull this thing inside, guess what? Our strike is free. Doesn't come easier than that. 
Okay. That sack goes in the stat sheet for 45 for our defensive end, but really it should go to me because we, we drew that one up right there. I'm, I jest. Okay, so what we're trying to do when we're attacking protection schemes, again, we're going to spend a lot of time game planning, understanding how teams are going to protect. The majority of teams that we come up against are half slide protection teams, and they all have rules. So I spend a ton of time looking at those clips, understanding how they protect. Most teams are going to have a pretty simple rule, right? You're going to be, I can say this, right, because, because he's gone. Our old offensive line coach, when he was here, his rule was half slide to the field. All right, so we always half slid to the field. Some teams always half slide to the three technique. Some teams always half slide opposite the running back. Once you watch enough film and you really understand how they're going to protect, you can dictate how they're going to protect and you can attack them where they're weak, right? I kind of went through a little bit right there, how we like to attack those different schemes. So what we're trying to do when we're coming up with a pass rush game plan is we're trying to exploit that protection to waste blockers and create free rushers versus more protectors. What we mean by that is we want to bring four against five and have one guy unblocked. And you can do it if you're smart and understand how those guys are protecting you. So a little bit about how we do that. So these are some, some ways that we kind of dictate protection first. So again, there's going to be rules. We're going to have an understanding of how a team's going to protect, but also we might want to throw them out some little bait right there. We want to definitely force them into doing one thing or another, or there might be some stuff we see on film where we're getting, we can get them into a check by showing them something or other. So very simple things from the top left, walk up a linebacker. All right. If you walk up a linebacker and throw a three man pressure off the side, most of the time you're going to get a half slide that way. A lot of the time, they don't want to give you a free run through on the running back. All right. Offsetting the nose does a very similar thing. This next picture. Okay. Down in the bottom left, this is something we do a lot of five across. We have a lot of different ways to get five across. If you study like um, the Patriots and Bill Belichick's defense, they do very similar stuff where you can run a kind of twist or a concept from a lot of different fronts, but it's the same concept. So what I mean by that is we can go into what we call a devil front, which is two, three techniques and mug the linebacker up, right? We're giving them a five man front. The picture you see here in the bottom left is from our Oki. All right, we can walk up both backers. Guess what? Again, we got a five-man front. All right, or we'll do what we call a tight. We'll bump the, the end and the buck in. We'll bring our outside backers up off the edge. Again, showing a five-man front, okay? And then we can run twists off of that where everyone understands that whoever is the three technique or the zero technique or the five technique is doing a specific thing. So we can basically do one thing out of a lot of different looks but for us it's just one word so we're not learning a huge amount of install okay five across is a great way for us to dictate man protection as well but we want to get so you're going to see a lot of that that we do and then the last thing is showing overload right so walk up like walk up both backers in the a gaps walk up a double edge pressure okay a lot of the time if you show an overload a six man pressure you can get them into a full slide protection pretty quick and that's something that obviously we're going to exploit Okay, so a little bit about kind of how we attack that with some pass stunts. Okay, so we have a couple of two-man stunts that we can call. Sometimes we'll give our guys the freedom to call it themselves. Sometimes we'll build it into our game plan. But these are just some things that we'll throw in there that we'll kind of use to attack protections once we understand what we're going to see. So the first one to talk about is what we call an ET stunt. Okay, ET is the one stunt that we'll run that we don't really mind doing to the side of a slide. So everyone runs some version of this, right? It's essentially an up and under from the defensive end. So we're going to take one step, maybe three steps upfield. We'll game plan it again. If that team's going to set really deep, right, we'll probably take more steps upfield. If they're a jump setting team or they're going to set early in the down, we're going to take one and we're going to go, right? But the idea is that we're going up and ripping inside. You're going to see the three technique or the two eye is going to occupy the guard. Okay, again, we don't mind doing this to the slide side because we're trying to pull that guard back and have the tackle think that he's got help inside, okay? And then he's gonna work to contain. So this is gonna flip our, our rush rules, right? In a four-man rush, our end in this picture is now gonna be our face rusher. Our tackle is now gonna be our contained rusher. The rules remain exactly the same. So a little bit of film on that right here. Okay, so you're gonna see on the left side, two I and the end are working an ET stunt. Okay, this is a team that's gonna set pretty quick on you. So you're gonna see one step and rip inside. Okay, look, there's your jump set right there. So you're going to see one step from the end and rip inside. Here's our nose tackle doing a really good job of occupying the guard. Okay, he's going to physically wait until he sees that visual key of the end crashing inside before he loops outside. Okay, but we do a really good job of creating confusion. And then what do we see right here from the tackle? An open gate. So we're going to play either power or an inside move. Guess what? We're going power. This guy's pretty big. He's pretty strong. 
and we get a sack on the QB right there. Really good example of the ET stunt. Okay, next stunt to talk about is a TE. So this is us taking our tackle vertical through the B gap, and then we're gonna take a jab, and we're gonna loop with our end. Again, we're gonna game plan it. So if they're a team that sets pretty deep, we're gonna attack much deeper. If they're a team that sets pretty shallow, you're gonna see a one-step jab and go. And also for our tackle, his rule is gonna change a little bit week by week as well. If they're a team that sets that guy kind of deep into our path, you're gonna see a pick through that tackle. If they're gonna jump set and widen with him, we're just gonna get straight vertical and we're essentially gonna put that guard on an island where he's gonna have to choose. I got examples of both in this clip right here. So here on the right, you're gonna see um, basically kind of an early set. Okay, so this guy's gonna set wide to me. You're gonna see a quick jab. Okay, getting vertical from the three technique, putting that guard on an island. We do a great job of looping with the buck and getting pressure. Okay, end up popping the ball out in that one right there. This clip right here, okay, you're gonna see a much deeper set. Okay, so you're gonna see on the left, the, th the two I, okay, work into that B gap, watch the tackle set really deep and into our path. And you're also gonna see the defensive end really work up field on this one, okay, because of the way that they set. Now we're picking through that guy again. Look at the guard is in a dilemma. Here comes the loop inside. Great pressure. Getting a sack on the QB. Okay, so two different examples of us running the same stunt right there. All right, and then the last one, this is probably our favorite one. Okay, if you ask uh, 53, who was our, our three technique last year, I think he ended up second in the conference in sacks. He loves this one. He got like three or four sacks on this concept. So we run an interior twist where if we understand how a team is going to half slide, so this is specifically to try and pick on a half slide. I should, I should say the TE stump, we try and run to the man side of a protection. Um, so for the, the interior twist, we're going to try and pick on the back side of a half slide. So what you're going to see is our nose tackle attacks through the back half of a sliding center who's sliding away from him. And then he's going to work basically the opposite face rush. So he's going to work off of his backside, opposite side of the pocket, keep the QB inside of him. Our tackle, again, a game plan thing. He's either going to take a jab or he's just going to go immediately. He's going to loop to the other side. And what you're going to see is we're going to put that backside guard into conflict where he's going to have to decide whether he's coming off for the twister or he's staying on that nose. I got some pretty good examples of it on film right here. So between the nose and the three techniques. So this team, we know how they're going to protect. They're going to slide opposite the running back. All right, so we set our, our front that way. There goes the center sliding away. My nose is going to pick through him. Okay, he gets kind of eaten up by the guard, but guess what? Doesn't matter. We get a free rusher, 53, twisting in here. Closes, right? There's that word finish. So he's closing the distance with the QB. Gets a great sack. Okay, this is the opposite. Okay, so now you're gonna see that backside guard decides he wants to come off. Okay, so same type of concept. All right, they're sliding to the field to our three technique. Now the guard's gonna come off on the twister and now we got the nose free. Okay, we don't have a contained rusher right here. He steals a sack opportunity from us, but a really good example of creating pressure there. And then this last one, this team, we really understood how they were going to pass protect. We knew if we showed edge pressure, we could get them to really, really sell that slide. So you're going to see a really hard slide here because we're kind of dangling our strike out there as an edge pressure. All right, and you're going to see again that backside guard in conflict. Right, you can see that jab from our three technique. This was a team we wanted to time up a little bit more. There's that jab and loop. And guess what? Here's a free rusher again, getting pressure on the QB. So just with a little bit of understanding of how they want to pass protect, where they're going to send the front to, we can attack those with these different stunts. So a couple of different four-man pass stunts that we do. I'm going to start on the right here. So this is a concept we call Slapdog. Stole this from uh, Ben Albert over at Duke. If you guys go online, he has a bunch of videos on there. They do some cool stuff. We really like this concept because um, it's, a, it's a, a pretty safe stunt for us to call when we're not guaranteed a passing situation. So this is a stunt that you can call in second and six, third and four, that kind of situation where if you get run, it's still pretty sound. So what you're going to see is our defensive ends are going to crash immediately inside. They're looking to pick through the shoulders of the guards. They're becoming the face rushers. And then our interior linemen, our tackle and our nose are going to cross and loop to contain. And a lot of the time, those guys are going to end up free. So our rule in this, if we get any kind of run action, is we have to force the ball outside. 
So think of it like a full reduce front or what we call a merge front. Our linebackers understand if we got a slap dog called, that ball has to hit outside in the run game. So we really like that this in those kind of middle yardage situations. We also run a lot of time against empty, right? If a, if a team likes to run the QB from empty, we'll run it there to be really, really safe. Okay, so you're gonna see slap dog right here. Again, defensive ends crashing inside, not the cleanest rep in the world, but we get a free rusher on the left, 53. Okay, really good example of pressure. Again, if you look at the man side of this half slide, right, the backside guard, you can see him really kind of conflicted with this movement, not understanding where to go. Okay, threw this one in here for you. This is a run play. So again, our guys understand if we get run, we got to force the ball outside. So we're getting a little power read on the fly right here. Defensive end is crashing inside. He knows I got to force that give, make the ball hit outside. And when you have an athlete at Mike, he's going to run that thing down for a one yard gain. Really good rep on film right there. Okay, we're pretty fired up about that one. Okay, and then this last one again, watch the backside guard. So the right guard, Again, he's to the man side, all right? This is a half slide protection. He's really kind of thrown off by this twist right here. Here comes the pick, puts that right tackle in a dilemma, and now we got 54 free. This ball comes out pretty quick, but we get really good pressure. Okay, and then this last one is a sack. This is kind of showing you again, right guard is in conflict. This is how we can win with our defensive end guy. So the, the right guard has to set inside. He doesn't know where he's going, right? He's meant to be the man guy. Defensive end kind of loses his balance because he's going for the knockout blow, but he's able to get pressure and get on the hip of the QB right here. So we really like that one in those in those middle yardage situations, but also, you know, it's, it's just a good way to tear apart protections. TO for us is a concept we run, which is basically an amalgam of a TE and an ET stunt. So we're going to try and game plan this. So again, we don't mind running the ET stunt to the half slide side. So we're going to try and game plan it that way. So we want our half slide to run the ET stunt. On the man side, we're gonna run the TE stunt. It's a good way to create a lot of movement. You're gonna see some clips right here where we don't necessarily get immediate pressure, but we're making the QBC color, we're pulling his eyes down, and we're throwing off the timing of the passing concept. So here you're gonna see right on the left side, there's your ET stunt. On the right side, again, if this is the quick setting team on the TE stunt, you're just going to take one step and go, right? So 59, he's a freshman in this one, okay? We'd like him working the edge of that guard, but you can see we're getting pressure there, forcing the QB off of his point, making him see color. Same concept right here. Okay, much better job on the pick on the right side. Again, we don't get immediate pressure in this play, right? The QB is fine, but what are we doing? We're making him see color. His eyes come down, he leaves the pocket, we got an athlete as part of our rush. He runs it down. We get a sack on that play. Okay, you're going to see a really good pick on the left here from our TE stunt. Okay, again, if that guy sets deep into our path, then we're going to try and pick through and put that guard into conflict. So there's a really good pick and push vertical. Again, get the QB off his point. We don't get the sack, but we forced an incompletion. This isn't a two-minute drill in a one-score game right here. So that's a really, really pivotal play for us right there. Okay, and then this slide I basically entitled other cool stuff we do. So again, I spend a lot of time breaking down protections and then basically I go to our defensive coordinator and I draw up all kinds of wacky stuff on the board. So you're basically gonna be limited by your imagination and by what your DC lets you run as far as pressuring passes. So this is just some other kind of cool concepts we run. Um, we run a whole ton of stuff. Either we didn't have great clips of it or um, you know it didn't come off exactly like we wanted to, but this is just some examples of stuff. But as long as you understand how they're gonna pass protect and what their rules are, you can really kind of go a little bit crazy with this stuff. So this is just an example of some things we do. So again, this is our five across package. All right, so this is from our, what we call our tight front. Okay, so the end, nose, and buck are our three, zero, three, and we have our backers walked up on the edge. Okay, but what you're gonna see here is a pick and a loop. Again, if we put up a five front, we have a pretty good idea that we're gonna get a man protection, which means that we're gonna get, um, we're gonna be able to pick to our heart's content. So you're actually gonna see half slide here, but what we're trying to do is di dictate man protection. Okay, so from the right, you're gonna see the mic looping in. We're gonna be picking with our nose and with our three technique. Picking and pushing vertical. Okay, so you can see how we tear that thing apart. You know, I'm lying. This is man protection. There we go. It worked exactly how I drew it up. Okay, and there goes your, your mic coming free, getting pressure on the queue. Okay, this is on third and eight, and I think he gains two yards, so we'll take that for a win. Okay. 
This next one, kind of a cheat. Um, this is an overload pressure. So again, if we understand how a team's gonna protect, we can overload away where they're weak, okay? So we're gonna bring an overload pressure here. We're gonna bring two linebackers, but we're still gonna rush five. So what we mean by that is we're gonna drop out our defensive end. We're always gonna put those guys in a position to win. So we're never gonna ask him to like run down a seam or you know go cover a, a, a receiver man on or anything like that. Typically he's gonna relate off the back. Maybe he's a curl flat player, but it's a good way for us to still rush five and still have the integrity of our fire zone coverage on the backside. Okay, so you're gonna see an example here. We're bringing overload from the left side. We're gonna reduce the front to the right. We expect they're sliding the front to the right and you're gonna see us get a free rusher right here off the left side. And there goes our, our buck. All right, our defensive end dropping out, relating off the running back. So we don't quite get a sack here. We do get pressure, and we end up batting the ball. So that's a good, impactful play, right? Disrupt the pass. That's our rule. This next play, same type of idea, okay? I hate showing this one because the, the pressure is so slow, all right? But I like showing it because it, it shows you kind of how we get that free rusher. All right, so again, the pressure is coming from the right. You're going to see the defensive, uh, sorry, the, the dime, right? Our weak backer come from the right. We're reducing to the left. Here's our buck dropping out. We get a free rusher. And again, easy, easy sack on that play right there. Okay, this one was really cool. Okay, so we ran this a couple times last year. This is basically an illusion of pressure, right? We're illusion of six-man pressure. We did this as an empty check in a game last year. Super successful for us. So we reduced the three technique. We run the dime and the mic through the B gaps. Our end and our buck are going to take a jab step to try and get those tackles to set out. And then they're going to drop underneath their near receiver. And you're going to see a really, really successful example of it right here. So I'm going to ask you to watch the left side of the defensive line. There's my buck. There's my mic. So you're going to see the buck take a jab step. You're going to see what that does to the offensive tackle. All right. And gives our mic a free rush. We get exactly what we want right now. Okay. But the icing on the cake is you got a pretty smart buck out there. Not the best athlete in the world, but he understands his role. Get your eyes to the near receiver, drop underneath, eyes back to the QB, and we get a pick, right? We end up winning this in a one score game. Huge, huge pivotal play for us right there. Okay, and then this last one, again, it's a five up protection, uh, sorry, five up um, pressure. Okay, we're showing five across. We're dictating man protection right here, but we're I'm basically just showing here how we can win with picks and twists. It's a good way to get a linebacker, a, a slightly more athletic guy up there into the pressure. Okay, so you're gonna see here on the right, again, five man up. Okay, we're dictating the protection. We actually offset the nose in this game to, we were trying to get a half slide and then we were trying to tag him back across and basically pull that center back through the protection. So just a different way to kind of mess with him. So you're gonna see the center slide right here and then we're trying to pull him back with the nose, doesn't quite come off. But what you do see is on the right, our, our Mike does a really good job on the TE stunt, gets vertical, there's that rip lean, finish on the back shoulder of the QB. QB gets upfield, okay? So what are we missing right here? This one will annoy you as, as, a, as a defensive lining coach. We're missing our face rusher, right? He, he doesn't keep the QB inside and upfield of him, right? Our nose tackle, he needs to keep working across the queue. But what we do get is the QB stepping up into a linebacker as good as a sack. All right, I think it goes for gain of a couple on third and long. So it's as good as a sack. So again, that's kind of all I have for you. Um, the thing I would stress again is, you know, you're only really limited by your imagination. As soon as you understand how they're going to pass protect, put yourself in the mind of them, jump up on a whiteboard and just start drawing and you're going to come up with some cool stuff. And then it's just your job to make your defensive coordinator buy it. So thank you very much for taking the time to, to listen. If you have any questions, my email's at the bottom of the screen. My name's Tom Lehandro. I'm really open to anything. If you want to learn more about how we do things, run game, pass game, Canyon, special teams, British football, any of that kind of stuff, please feel free to hit me up. Thank you.